Good morning. As you may have noticed, I took a few days off from vlogging. I've been pretty burnt out lately. I've worked pretty much non-stop. I, I, who would have guessed I would have turned into a workaholic 10 years ago? I would never have guessed. I found it really difficult to switch off from work. So I obviously have my yarn business and the holiday let and other little bits and bobs that I like to do as well and there's always something racing through my head so I find it very difficult to switch off so yeah I decided to take a much needed break so no editing no recording nothing so the vlog that I put up yesterday was recorded a few days before that it was recorded at the weekend so now I'm recording today obviously I'm going to be doing the drawers that I spoke about a few days ago. I'm going to be repainting them and trying to make them a little prettier than they are. I need to, well, I'm going to leave my hair tied up today, but I think I'm going to cut my fringe first because I'm starting to feel like an old English sheepdog. So I'm going to cut this so I can actually see what I'm painting. And I need to take all of the yarn out of the drawers that I'm going to paint and put them into like bin bags or something because I can't leave them lying around where the cats are. I'm going to bag them up, dump them on the sofa over here. And originally I was going to do these drawers outside in the yard but it's quite windy out there so it's just going to blow dust around onto the paintwork. I don't know if I'm going to give them a sanding. They only really need a light sand over to help the paint stick but because I'm going to be varnishing over the top of the paint I don't know if I'm going to bother. I will probably bring a piece of sandpaper or wet and dry paper or something up from the workshop and have a little test. Whether it'll make much difference though I don't know with it being varnished over the top. I don't know. What I'm going to use to paint them with is, right, if you see this purple on the wall behind me, it looks very bright here. Let me see if I can get it to show the purple better. I, it's kind of a dark aubergine purple. It's it's not as dark as aubergine but it's kind of in that colour range. So what I was planning on doing is I'm going to bring the paint up that I used to paint the walls with and I also bought a bottle of blue acrylic paint and black acrylic paint. Just cheap, you know, like kids acrylic, um, artist acrylic paint just from like the pound shop. And I'm going to tint some of this purple down to make it darker but also more of a violet purple rather than a, and this is quite a, it's not a plum but it's it's like a warm-ish purple. I'm going to make it a little cooler with some blue in there, make it a bit more violet purple but a dark. And do a little test on it, on the drawers, see how we go. And I'm actually going to work in here today. I'm going to put some newspapers or a dust sheet or something down to work on and paint in here because it's nice and warm, well, not too warm but it's cosy in here and it's just more pleasant to work in than outside in the wind. And it should be fine, I'm just going to kind of go at it, I'm going to slap paint on there and I might make a little bit more with a little darker and tint it down and kind of what, make the edges a little darker and make it a little, so it's not just all one colour. I'm going to try and do um, kind of like not an aged effect but you know make it a little bit more interesting and I'm just gonna go at it and see where it takes me but I need to cut this so I can actually see what I'm doing and take the handles off these drawers take the wool out these drawers take all my stuff off the top of the drawers and there's my phone bleeping who knows and uh, get to it okay fringe coat I can actually see looks a little wonky on camera it's not anyway i've took all of the yarn out of the drawers and i took all the these little handles off we're gonna focus i'm wondering looking at these handles i'm thinking that these drawers are older than i originally thought because they look very um I know, almost 20s, 30s, 
I thought these drawers were more 50s, but maybe it's a little bit older, but I'm just guessing on that. One of them I couldn't remove. That one there. The screw head was just rounding off. It was just in far too tight, so I'm just going to have to paint really carefully around that handle, but I got all the rest off. The carcass has been emptied. I'm kind of dreading moving it. I'm half expecting to find some some dead vole or something behind there because cats but hopefully not i'm going to go fetch the paint from the workshop i have i will not be painting with these little paint brushes but i do have a half inch paintbrush which i think will be fine um it'll take a bit longer to paint the carcass but not too bad all i'll be doing is painting the draw fronts the I have been painted before. My granddad painted these a few years ago. It was for either my sister or my mum's bedroom at a previous house. And he's only painted the front and the top edge of each drawer. So I'll be doing the same. And the carcass, well obviously I'll have to paint all the carcass. I'm not sure if the back's been painted, probably not. But I'll basically be painting over all of the white paint that's currently on. Don't think I'll bother with sanding it but once I start putting paint on if it's just slipping and sliding around then I might have to I got the what I thought was acrylic it's not supposed to paint but that's even better because I'll be mixing them in with emulsion paint the purple emulsion paint that's on these walls so it's just cheap poster paint blue to tint it more violet bit of black if it needs it to tone it down I'll definitely need that for the just a tint a little tiny bit to kind of rub on the edges of the drawers um, just to give it a little bit of dimension so I've got those to hand and just got to get that paint from the workshop and I can start painting now On to day number two of this project now and last night I realised I hadn't taken a problem into account. I had, I knew I was going to have problems painting onto, straight onto the original gloss in that I'd been way too lazy to actually sand the gloss back a bit. So I knew that the, the, the paint was going to slip around on it, which it did obviously. What I hadn't took into account was the, ne the subsequent layers of paint lifting the paint off from underneath so I put a second coat on last night and I'm doing the third coat this morning it's relatively early at the moment but what I've done is I have my paint mixed up in here is I've added a big dollop of PVA glue to it and hopefully I mean it's still gonna lift the paint underneath a little bit but once this coat dries it'll create like a, a, a semi waterproof not waterproof but you know semi waterproof coat that means that the coat on top of that shouldn't lift the paint underneath it should create enough of a seal or oh, that's what I'm hoping uh, last night I was at the point where I was thinking I should have just bought spray paint for this I, re I should have, in fact it would have come out nicer if I had just bought spray paint. If I bought a tin of purple and a tin of blue and a tin of black and just kind of layered them and it would have looked really nice. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I get, I, what I wanted to do was use what I had um, or as best as best I could but obviously that's not working out as well as expected. But let's see, hopefully this PVA glue will sort of solve this problem otherwise tomorrow I'll be going back in, well I've got to go into town tomorrow anyway, but tomorrow I'll be going to um, a shop for some spray paint I think. Because now I've started this I can't exactly stop. You can kind of see here, I don't know if I can get it to, here, where the, uh, it's not going to focus, the paint is lifting off underneath. So I've got to work quickly. So then, this, this coat I'm working on 
doesn't have time to wet the coat underneath too much and then lift off with the paintbrush. So I'll just have to see how we go. You can't really see the colour in here um, because it's quite a dark morning. I mean, it just kind of looks charcoal on there because I've got all the artificial lights on in here at the moment. But you can also, I haven't painted the top yet, but you can see where last night where I was putting the second coat on that it should be as thick as sort of here, but obviously the brush has, and my camera straps in the way, um, the brush is lifting off the paint uh, as I'm going, so I'm having to work really quite quickly when I'm putting the paint on. I'm starting to look a little frazzled here. I have put two coats of paint with PVA glue on, on this now. I'm not long done the second coat. I think it'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this coat dry and then I'm going to go in with a dry brush and just a tiny bit of paint on and do some... I was going to say stippling, but that reminds me so much of the 90s. But kind of adding a little bit of darker blue on around the edges of the drawers and corners and stuff like that. If it looks bad, I can always paint over it. But I want to make it kind of darker on the edges and what have you. Kind of, but subtly so, you know, not like rag rolling, you know. But I have just been down the post box and got the post. My yarn has come. I ordered, uh, what did I order? I ordered, it's upside down, it is upside down. I ordered these. Christmas yarn. I know it's Vlogtober, it's not Vlogmas, but Christmas yarn. I ordered the Stylecraft Head Over Heels Festive Pack, is it? Festive Pack. Um, I think it comes with patterns as well for socks and such like, and it comes with four balls of sock yarn. I'm just about to open it. And I also ordered a skin of the Middle Focus. It is Regia sock yarn for hand dyeing. It's I like the Regia sock base. It oh I'm out of focus. I like the uh, Regia sock base. I like how hard wearing it is. So when I noticed that you could buy the undyed yarn, I thought I'm gonna buy it next time I order some yarn. I'm gonna throw in a skein of this. So that when I want contrast toes and heels for some socks, I'm a yarn dyer. I can dye it the exact colour I want. I can wind off 25 grams of this skein into a mini skein and dye 25 grams which is perfect amount or 20 grams depending on what sock yarn I'm using. Um, I can wind off the amount that I need for contrast toes and heels and dye the exact colour that I want for a pair of socks. So I ordered that but I'm going to order, open these Christmas, this Christmas pack. So bear with me. Okay, so this seems to be a self-striping ball and, well one of these is self-striping anyway, maybe they're both self-striping. I thought one of them had flecks and stuff in it, like a patterned yarn. Maybe it's that, uh, yeah, that one seems to have patterning in it, it doesn't, it looks stripey when I look closer. Um, it looks little variegated in some of the stripes so I think that must be the one that's got a little bit of patterning and such like in it and this one must be the self striping one which is good because this one's actually got a really nice darker red in the stripes compared to this one which has got lighter red and there's also this one which has got it looks like lurex lurex um, in the strand so it's it's gold lurex, I'm not sure if it's showing up gold or silver on camera, but um, it's very sparkly and plain red for contrast, but that red looks very, very, very bright red, so it's a bit bright compared to that and it might be okay with this one. 
um, because this one actually has two tones of red in it. It's got the dark red and it's got a lighter red, so it's probably okay with that. Oh, it's very red. Uh, it's a bit, it's raining outside, so I'm a bit damp. Um, but that is a very bright red, so I think that one probably goes really well with that yarn, which is fine. It does have patterns. It's got, what's it got in it? It's got mitten patterns, sock patterns, hat patterns. I can't really show the patterns because it is a paid for. I don't know if you can get these downloaded for free, but I can't show them if, when I'm not sure. But yeah, it's got the patterns for the socks and the hats and the wristies. It doesn't have the baby ones because I believe those ones you can download on the website. Maybe the baby jumper patterns are free and the rest of them will only come with this. I'm not sure. But yeah, so they'll be a nice bit of fun Christmas knitting. It's not as if I haven't already got Christmas sock yarns, but I saw them and I really like that one. I really like that one with the darker red self-striping one I like a dark red rather than a, a bright 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 red that's really nice so yeah there's my Christmas sock knitting as if I don't already have several set pairs of Christmas socks to knit already so I've got to wait for these to dry John has arrived at the ferry terminal he is coming home tonight but he won't be home till probably getting on for midnight tonight the boat docks at 11 depending on how quickly they get off the boat and then it's a half hour drive or 25 minute drive home I would like these drawers finished before then but it depends how quickly this paint dries I've opened the window in here but I can only open it so far because I don't want the cats coming in because if the cats come in especially Holly with her feather dust feather duster long head tail then she's going to get fur on the paint so I can't open the window wide um, but I would like to get my craft room back to some semblance of order so I think what I will do now is I'm going to go do a bit of cleaning and wait for this paint to dry I don't watch paint drying it's still really wet and windy out I've been down the workshop and found some clear satin varnish although there's not a lot left I'm hoping it's enough but I am of two minds I don't know whether a water-based varnish is going to lift the paint or whether I should use a clear wax which has less chance of lifting the paint or would it because I mean you kind of got to rub the wax in plus if it all goes wrong I can't really paint over the wax so I have to think about that I do not look like Kathy from Wuthering Heights but it is pretty windy out there. So I'm going to start stippling, stippling. Yes, I feel like Smiley Carol Smiley from 90s changing rooms. I'm going to use, I think, I don't know, some of the blue and the black and on a dry brush, which I can't, there it is, dry brush, tiniest amount. And I'm just gonna kind of put it on the, the edges and the corners and kind of blend it in it might look awful I might be putting another coat of paint on this tomorrow I hope not but we shall see better start This is not working. It's just lifting the paint off again. I'll bring the camera in closer. You see, it's just lifting off again. Even with the PVA glue, it hasn't worked. Um, and you can see up here, it's just coming 
it's coming off again and I'm having real problems with all these edges as well uh, the paint just won't stick at all um, John suggested maybe it's you know like grease up it like just over time people's hands just kind of building up on the corners which is why they're worse than the actual flat surfaces I don't know so I'm not entirely sure what to do now the kind of effect with the paint was working I've done a crappy job on one of the drawers but um, you know it's it was kind of working but again it's just lifting the paint so I don't know I think what I'm gonna do is the carcass of it on the side that usually sits against the wall I might just do a little test with some of the varnish and see if it will stick and if it will and if it'll it won't lift the paint and if it'll be okay then that's fine I'll just paint the body of it well I'll varnish the body of it um, and then what I might have to do is take the drawers out and sand them but I should have just sanded it to begin with sand the fronts and the edges of the drawer back take the top of the gloss take all the paint off I've done take the shine off the gloss eyes are quite tired now and repaint them start again from scratch on the drawers I'd rather not with the body a bit if I don't need to because I wasn't planning on doing the kind of weathering effect on the body of it maybe just a tiny bit on um there's a little bit of I don't know if you can see with the draw there but there's kind of a little bit of detail on this front edge um so i might just on that and kind of on the corners of that but i could maybe get away with doing that after it's been varnished maybe just go in with a tinted wax and just um you know make it a little bit darker just the tiniest bit uh yeah, I'm going to test with a little bit of varnish in the, on the, the hidden side. Maybe even a little bit of clear wax just to see if it makes a difference. And then I will yeah, coat, the car, coat the body of it and come back to the drawers, I think. But I think that's going to have to be it for today because I am getting quite tired now. It's bright in here. I put my studio lamp, one of my studio lights up up here behind me because it is really dark in here today well it's later in the day now it's evening um but it's quite dark in here today because the weather is really pretty grotty out there um so yeah that's my plan for the moment and then i've got to get this footage edited and get this uploaded ready for going on youtube tomorrow Hopefully, in my next video, I will have this sorted and I can speak to John when he gets home tonight, or in the morning rather, and see what he thinks. Well, I know what he thinks, but he is the experienced panel painter from when he used to work in the garage, used to painting on shiny surfaces. He said I should have sanded it, sanded it and keyed it. And he also says that no matter what I do now, it's all gonna it's gonna lift off. So I should probably just start from scratch. But hey ho. Okay, see you next time.